I, I started the week with Tadat, and I'm ending it with Tadat. And uh, we had a trust fund on managing natural resource wealth and a trust fund on uh, revenue mobilization uh, in between. Um, so it's, it's really been a, a, a week of uh, public finances, a week of revenue, a week of tax, as well as administration. Um, and, and I think it's, it's been an extremely uh, instructive week for, for all of us. Having these trust funds, of course, brings in a lot of, uh, of, of outside points of view, of expertise, uh, and, and I think that's, that's been very, very positive for an organization such as ours. Um, I mean, Nathan was saying you should step back and think about you know, why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I've been wearing my current hat only recently, and before that, for more than 10 years, I was in the African department of the IMF, and my daily bread was uh, dealing with countries that uh, didn't have enough revenue to finance uh, essential spending, let alone uh, unessential spending. Um, and, in, and one of the studies we did, which I still carry around with me because I found it very, very useful, um, so we, we, we looked at countries in Africa that had grown rapidly over the last 20, 25 years, and there are, there are quite a few. Um, and countries that grew at between 6, 7, 8% over a period of 20 years. You know, Uganda would be uh, one, one example of that, but also Tanzania and Rwanda and Mozambique. Uh, would, would, would be others. So we had a set of about seven, eight countries, and we, we then asked the question, what is it that distinguishes these countries from others? What is it that they did that others didn't do? Obviously, there was no single answer to this. There never, there never is. Um, there were a variety of answers, but quite central to the success of countries that were able to sustain economic growth for a long period of time was their ability to raise more revenue. On average, the tax to GDP ratio or revenue to GDP ratio in those successful countries rose by between four and five percentage points of GDP over the last 20 years, meaning they went from, say, around 11 to 16, from 12 to 17. And, and that is a, a huge increase in a country's ability to finance essential services, whether, whether these are social services in health and education, whether these, this is maintaining infrastructure, whether it's paying civil servants. It, it led to, the, in, over the same period in many countries, to a, a, a rapid decline in dependence on aid, which is also a good thing. Um, and I think if you, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking under the control of lots of experts here, but if you look at economic literature and countries' development, Building a tax culture is an enormously important element of development because it makes citizens, gives citizens a stake into what is happening with that money. Uh, does it happen overnight? No. But if you look at a period of 20, 25 years, you do see uh, enormous amounts of improvement. So for me, that is the, the big question, the reason we're doing what we're doing, and, and, and the reason why I thought this was a, was a really important week. Now, on, on today and Tadat, I'm not going to try to summarize the entire day. I understand the summaries will be written and distributed, so you will, you will all benefit from that. There are a number of things that stood out to me as I, as I listened to, to, to all of you today. Um, I thought we heard from those who have been uh, benefiting, I, I don't want to say being subject to, but we're benefiting from such an assessment. We heard from our, our, our friend from Brazil, we heard from Canada, and we saw lots of testimonies uh, on, on video. And I think what, what I got from that is that this is an immensely useful tool because it teaches you something about yourself, it teaches you where your strengths and weaknesses are, and it brings people together. I think that is what I heard across a lot of testimonies, that you know, it breaks down silos, it makes people work together, uh, and, and I think that is a good thing in, in all walks of life, including in, in tax administrations. Uh, I think we, we heard a number of people praising uh, the fact that this has been extended to the subnational level, and I think a country like Brazil is a good example of why that's important to, to do that, given the amount of revenue that is being raised at a subnational uh, level. Um, and we also heard a lot about the importance of transparency and accountability and publication. I was discussing it just now in the tax in, in the in the coffee break with some of uh, my, my colleagues. Um, you know, Marijn Verhoeven had said, well, you know, we, we need more publication, we need more transparency. Uh, and, and in fact, when I, when I looked at the uh, Tadat website, I was impressed by the number of countries that had published it. Um, I think Justin told me it's 13, 
So 13 out of 62, uh, that's obviously not a majority, but it is also not an insignificant number. Uh, I'm personally constantly embarrassed by the fact that only 3% of IMF technical assistance reports are actually published, and 97% are not. So Tadat is clearly ahead of the game here. Marijn then reminded me that in the World Bank, 100% of technical assistance reports are being published, which I did not know, but which I found a very interesting tidbit, which I will use internally as I fight for more publication of TA reports. But be that as it may, I think publication and transparency is a good thing. It's a good thing because you always learn from external scrutiny. Uh, it improves the quality of the product. Uh, and and with, with Tadat, that quality is already very high as people look at it. And I think feeling comfortable about sharing this is a good thing. Countries also learn from each other. Uh, I think this is one of the main reasons why I've, I find it important that technical assistance reports are published. If you're doing a, a report on property taxation in Rwanda, I can guarantee you that the Ugandans and the Kenyans and the Tanzanians would find this incredibly useful. Uh, and, and you don't need to send a, necessarily a, a mission to every country to do this, for which nobody has the resources, certainly not the IMF. So if you share technical assistance reports, you're going to be sharing also advice with, with, with more countries who would benefit tremendously from it. Um, in terms of looking ahead for Tadat, again, I think you will, you will get a full report. The things that I heard towards the end of the day that I thought were particularly, uh, or that struck me as being important, emphasis on, on training and emphasis on data quality. In the end, an assessment is as good as the data that goes into it. So I think that is certainly an important um, takeaway. I think Mick talks about uh, you know, the, the sort of the academics and, and, and the impact, uh, the, what they could do with this. And that, yes, if you had 62 published reports from Tadat, there would be a wealth of information in there. And from that, I think many could learn. So I think that's another benefit of, of transparency is that you can then draw lessons from it, cross-country lessons, lessons over time, things that have worked, things that not, have not worked. And I, I think that it would be also very, very beneficial. And of course, uh, in the last session, we also brought out this, this link between the revenue administration, tax administration on the one side, policy on the other side. There obviously is a link, uh, and I think that is something that uh, in, in, in the future uh, we could certainly pay uh, even more attention to. Um, so for me, and I hope for you, a very, very, very instructive day um, with a lot, of, a lot of food for thought um, and a lot of encouragement, I think, for the work that is being done uh, under, under Tadat. Um, which, which brings me to my final point, which is not the least important, but probably the most important, which is to thank all of those partners that have been supporting Tadat, uh, which I think has, has allowed us to do the work that we do. Um, and to thank, of course, uh, the Tadat Secretariat under the able leadership of Justin Zake. Uh, please join me in thanking him once more for the amount of work that he's been doing. I, I think we can all agree that this has been an uh, uh, enormously interesting and, and instructive day, but it's also, I think, the uh, testimony to the, to the work that uh, Justin and his colleagues, I should say, which I can't all name, but you know who you are, <laughs> the work that you've done uh, in, uh, in doing these assessments and sharing them with countries. And I'm sure the gratitude of the countries, you've heard many testimonies today uh, also there. And in the end, for an international institution such as the IMF, um, that is why we do what we do. So with that, I, I wish you a, a good evening, a good weekend, uh, and may the best team win in the World Cup. Thank you. <laughs>